So I guess it's no secret Tarkov can run like a bit of a Microsoft PowerPoint at times. So today we're going to be diving into the best settings and some tweaks and fixes to get the most out of your system and increase your FPS. So we're jumping straight into hardware recommendations. If you're confident in your hardware, feel free to skip. The timestamps are down below. But let's look at my first recommendation here, and that is Tarkov should definitely be installed on an SSD, if not M.2. Get yourself a SATA. There are plenty of cheap SSDs out there, and not only will it decrease your loading times, but increase your FPS, and I would 100% recommend it. If you're currently sitting on eight gigabytes and you're getting random stuttering, I would go out of your way to go and buy yourself a 16 gig kit of RAM. Whether this is 3200 megahertz or higher, you'll definitely notice a significant performance upgrade across the board when you upgrade your RAM. This is one of the best places that you can spend your money if you are trying to increase your performance in Escape from Tarkov simply because of the memory issues this game has. The next one is go and get yourself a 6 plus core CPU. If you're sitting on a 4 core CPU, you're going to notice a lot of bottlenecking, as well as the fact that Unity is a single core favorable engine. Across the board, CPUs with higher gigahertz clocks, you're actually going to notice a much better performance increase. This is a very CPU heavy title, so if you get yourself a beefy CPU, you will definitely gain FPS. Maps like Reserve, however, can max out 4GB of VRAM on a graphics card, so if you are noticing weird issues with this map, going and upgrading to a graphics card with 6 plus gigs it will definitely increase your performance across the board. Alright, this next setting is for NVIDIA GPU users only, so if you guys are Radeon, feel free to skip to the next step in this guide. However, you're going to right click on your desktop, and you're going to get an option here that says NVIDIA Control Panel. Go ahead and click that and once it's finished loading up you're going to see on the left hand side there's a tab that says manage 3d settings go ahead and click that you're going to get two options in the middle global and program click on program and then you're going to have a drop down menu now if tarkov is not rocking up in this drop down make sure you launch it if it's still not here go ahead and click add and look for it here now once again if it's still not there escape from tarkov.exe click browse in the bottom right corner and go and find your escape from tarkov.exe the easiest way to do this is find your launcher, right click, open file location, and it should bring up your install folder. I simply went back one folder and look for EFT or EFT Live, double click on the folder and there's Escape from Tarkov. Make sure you do not do underscore battle eye as this is the wrong option. After you double clicked on Escape from Tarkov.exe, it should rock up in the list. And after you finish highlighting it, make sure you click add selected program. All right, so these next couple steps are actually really important. So I want you guys to follow along. There are a few settings here that are really important. So we're scrolling down to the first one here, which is power management mode. You're going to go ahead and drop this down to prefer maximum performance. And the next one's going to be trilinear optimizations. Go ahead and turn this one on. The one above it as well is called texture filtering quality. You're going to go and drop this down to high performance because that is actually one of the most important settings here. We're going to scroll down to vertical sync and turn this off. If you guys haven't already, make sure you definitely turn this off as it adds input lag. We're going to get into the next one here, which is threaded optimization, which has been fixed by a Reddit user. If you're unsure whether your CPU has hyper threading, make sure you leave this on auto. As in my case with the 3900X, I'm going to turn it on here today. If your CPU, however, doesn't have multi-threading, make sure you leave this either on auto or off. This next setting is called DPI scaling and it's to do with your resolution of your monitor and the way it scales. We're going to be going straight in and typing Battlestate Games Launcher, right click, open file location and we're going to be looking for escape from Tarkov.exe once again. Now we're going to not go to the Battlestate Games Launcher here, remember we're going to go back a folder to Battlestate Games and then into EFT or EFT Live and looking for escape from Tarkov. After you click on properties, we're going to be heading towards the compatibility tab and down the very bottom is a setting here called change high DPI settings. Click this and there's going to be a tick down the very bottom. Make sure you tick this that says override high DPI scaling behavior, scaling performed by application, then hit OK. Now this is going to stop any sort of blurriness when DPI scaling happens. So we're going to go ahead and open the launcher and there's going to be a settings tab at the very top. Once you clicked on settings, there are two drop down options. The first one is exit the launcher and the one beneath it as well is exit the launcher completely. Once you've ticked these two, you're good to start up the game. So 
So once you're in Tarkov, click the cog in the bottom right corner and go to the far left tab called game. As soon as you're in here below where your name and all the other settings are, we're going to look for auto RAM cleaner. If you have eight gigabytes of RAM, make sure you turn this on. Anything above that, make sure it's off. The one below it, use only the physical cores. I'm going to leave this unticked as the multi-threading issues of Tarkov have been fixed by a Reddit user. Now, I want you guys to know that there has been some stuttering scenarios where CPUs with multi-threading having this ticked has actually caused a significant loss of FPS. So I make sure that you guys untick this if your CPU has multi-threading. The next setting here, heading over towards the graphics tab, this is where we get into the juice. Now, I want you guys to ignore resolution. You know what this is, but we're going to look at VSync. Now, remember how I told you guys to turn VSync off in the control panel? Well, that's because that adds input delay. And if you turn it on in game after turning it off in the control panel, you can actually unlock your refresh rate. The next one here as well is screen mode. Make sure you turn this in full screen. Texture quality, I'm going to leave this on high. However, these don't actually make a huge difference unless you have a very low VRAM graphics card with causing stuttering on certain maps. Turn on high plus texture streaming for the best FPS possible. However, it doesn't look great. The shadows are actually not super important. Shadows actually don't make a huge difference across the board. The different qualities actually just allow you to change the visibility slider even further. They don't actually affect your FPS that much. However, I leave mine on medium. However, I feel like this is a happy medium because I actually leave it on around 60 anyway. Next one here is overall LOD quality. I would recommend leaving this on too. However, I noticed some issues with some things popping out like the 5.7 iron sights unless it was on 2.5 in my current case scenario. But for you, I would leave it on too. Overall visibility, once again, pop-in happens really badly around 400. So I would leave it on a thousand because sometimes on woods, other side of the river will actually despawn and you won't be able to see it. This is simply just things in the background. So leave this on a thousand if you want the best in-game experience. Shadow visibility, leave on 60. And the next one here is anti-aliasing. Now, I want you guys to know that FXAA is the best option for FPS. However, it looks like garbage. I would recommend TAA, TAA if you want a better smooth experience. And TAA High is simply the best version of anti-aliasing as it makes the edges just look really good without that sort of weird flickering effect in the distance. So we look at the resampling. I want to let you guys know that you should not touch super sampling. I use this for screenshots, but it destroys your FPS when you turn these on. If you are really struggling, however, you could use a 0.75 downscale and actually gain a significant amount of FPS, but it looks like garbage. I want you to turn HBAO off, SSR off, and anastropic filtering. You can turn this on per texture if you want a sharper look. However, it's actually best to leave this off. Sharpness does not affect your FPS in any sort of way, but I leave mine on 0.5. And for the bottom settings here, make sure you go out of your way to turn high quality color off as this one actually destroys your FPS like crazy. And Z Blur is something that I've actually been using recently, which is a depth of field effect in the bottom corner of your gun. Now, this is actually quite a nice setting for aesthetic reasons, giving you a depth of field effect. So Z Blur doesn't actually affect your FPS at all, really. It's one to two FPS, if that. And it gives you a really nice depth of field effect when you are actually looking at the stock of the gun when it's not the main focus. Now let's get to the next one here, which is enable post effects. Obviously post effects do affect FPS and I've done another video on this. And the main culprit for FPS loss is actually clarity, luma sharpen and adaptive sharpen. So if you guys actually aren't sure, you can obviously use things like your monitor saturation or simply going into control panel and adding digital vibrance may be a better option if you are struggling. So remember earlier how I told you to turn VSync off in control panel, but on in game? I'm going to explain why. Once again, go on ahead and turn it off. And we're going to be noticing with it's off in game and off in control panel, I'm actually hard locked at 120 to 122 FPS. Now you're going to be noticing that this isn't the end of the world. However, the limit is imposed. And when it's off in control panel, it actually doesn't have as much input lag as it would if it was on. And this is actually really significant. So make sure you go ahead and if you haven't already turned it off in whatever software, whether it be Radeon or NVIDIA control panel. So once VSync is off in control panel, go ahead and turn it on in game and it's actually going to sync to your monitor. 
So you're going to be noticing in the top right corner here, it says limit 60. However, that's actually incorrect. When looking down at the ground, I'm actually gaining a significant amount of FPS, well above 60 in the 165 plus range, depending on where I am on the map or where I'm looking. This has actually unlocked my refresh rate and you're going to notice an overall smoother experience. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If this helped you in any single way, gain any FPS or simply gave you a better understanding of the settings across the board, make sure to subscribe for further videos. Thank you so much for watching to the end. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.